Hello and welcome to my session for the AuthorTube Writing Conference. If you are joining me live, today I'm going to be talking about TikTok and Instagram and how to actually get seen by readers. And there will be a live Q&A chat at the end of the session as well. If you are watching the replay, be sure to tune into the live chat to get answers to your questions and I'll also pop into the comments as well if you are watching this at a later date. Thank you so much to AuthorTube Writing Conference for having me as part of this year's conference. Let's go ahead and dive into what we're going to be talking about today. If you are new to me and my channel, my name is Shelby Lee. I am a mental health writer. I write a lot of poetry. I write about anxiety and self-love. And over the past six or seven years of sharing my work online, I've grown my audience to more than half a million followers. And in just the past couple of years, I've sold tens of thousands of books on social media without ads. So I'm very, very passionate about social media and what it can do for us and our author careers. I started this channel last year to share book marketing tips and strategies for authors. And since creating courses and guides and one-to-one -one coaching with authors, I've supported over 2,200 authors now and empowered them to market themselves on social media. I am really excited with my background in social media marketing to talk with you today about TikTok and Instagram and how they can help you find your readers and grow your audience. To start, we are going to be talking about why social media marketing and setting up an effective author bio, making content on TikTok specifically since it is a new platform for many authors still, and then finding your readers on these platforms and engaging with them so that you can actually build a really strong community of readers in your audience. So first, I just want to set the stage for you if you aren't an avid social media user or you use it on a personal level but haven't delved too deeply into how it can be effective for you as, a, as an author. The first thing is that there are more than a billion monthly active users on these platforms. So if you are questioning whether or not your readers are going to be on there, they absolutely are. Readers of every genre use social media. Now, if your genre is more niche, that doesn't mean that all 1 billion of those people are going to be a target audience for you, but it's all about creating the right content and reaching the right people when it comes to your social media marketing. It's of course a really great way to reach people for free. So whenever I use the term organic, that just means not paid advertising. We're reaching people without paid methods. And because people are on these platforms already in droves, you can pay for ads if you'd like to for additional reach and sales. But I promise you, you absolutely can find readers for free as well with the right content and right strategy. So you don't have to pay for ads. I personally do not pay for ads to promote my mental health books. Another thing about both of these platforms is that they have heavily invested in short form vertical video. So TikToks themselves are short form vert vertical videos. By that, I mean just you're holding your phone like this versus it being a horizontal video. Um, so it takes up the full screen. And then it's also really easy to repurpose content across different platforms because social media platforms know that this is a really powerful way to market a powerful way for brands and authors and creative entrepreneurs alike to sell their products. And it's also just a really engaging way to storytell and get people involved in lifestyle content and all these different niches. So they are heavily investing in short form video on their platforms. YouTube started YouTube shorts. Instagram and Facebook quickly followed TikTok with, with Instagram and Facebook reels. So it's also really nice because we can repurpose a lot of the content that we're making onto other platforms while we're creating it. Now, why TikTok specifically is because with the way their algorithm works, new people are seeing our content every single time we post. So you can reach your followers, but you're also going to be reaching a new group of people. And if your video does really well and is extra engaging, it can reach thousands and millions of new people. So you're really getting eyes on your book content. Another fact, and this is from the website Material, TikTok users are twice as likely as users of other social platforms to recommend a product or service that they've discovered on TikTok. Now, I don't know what is in the water over on TikTok, but people are quick buyers, especially in the reader community. I've seen this with my own book sales where I sell a lot more books on TikTok versus other social media platforms. And it's also in the proof of the BookTok community getting billions of views of Barnes and Noble setting up special BookTok tables for the popular books on BookTok. People are passionate about books there and they're buying books like crazy. So I wanted to share that for you as well to set the stage before we dive into the material. 
as I mentioned, BookTok has billions of views on that hashtag. And so there is a huge reader community on the platform. Now it is reader driven. So that means you'll find a lot of readers talking about their favorite books, posting roundups of their favorite books and reviews of their favorite books, quotes from their favorite books. So it is very reader driven and it's a great place to do audience research and find out what your readers are talking about. But authors and small presses alike can also make a huge impact on TikTok as well. So in terms of actually setting up your profile, you'll first download the free app and create an account. Now, there was a recent study that came out from Metricool, and they found some differences between personal and business profiles in terms of business profiles getting slightly less reach and less engagement on their videos. However, business profiles give you access to only copyright free sounds, which means when you're adding a song to a video, you are not potentially using a song that shouldn't be used for promotional use. So it's your decision whether or not you want to do a personal or business account, but do some research ahead of time and see which one's a better fit for you. Then you'll want to choose a fitting username. If you already have social media accounts on other platforms, such as Instagram or, or Facebook, you might want to keep the username the same if you can. If you don't, choose a fitting username that has a keyword such as books or author. So this would be John Smith author, John Smith books, or maybe your genre if you stick to one genre only. And then you'll upload a profile picture. I highly recommend a picture of you. It really personalizes the profile, helps people see that you are a real person and drives that connection between the reader and you. The next thing you'll want to do is set up your actual bio. Now, a lot of people will think, okay, I just need to list a couple of things about me, but really what you want to do is make this reader focused. And I like to do this by asking myself a couple questions. What do your books do for your readers? What emotions are they going to bring your readers? feelings, lessons that they might learn from your books. And all of this can really be crafted into what I like to call a mission statement for your bio. So it really speaks to the reader and what they'll gain from reading your books. So a few examples are helping others feel less alone through my books. That was mine for a long time. And I still say that often publishing stories that will keep you awake at night. It would be good for a thriller author or a horror author writing books to make you believe in love again for a romance author could be a good fit. And the final piece that you want is your call to action. This should be the last line of your bio, and this applies to both Instagram and TikTok. Any platform that you have, you want a clear call to action, what you want your followers or readers to do next. Check out our books here, buy our books here, read more here, buy my book here. There's a lot of different options. Make it fitting to you. Now with TikTok, you do need to have a thousand plus followers to have a link in your bio. So to have that clickable link where people can go to your website, you do need to be using the platform for a little bit and grow up your audience. But something that you can do from the very beginning is link your Instagram page. So that way people can come to your profile and head to your Instagram, where you'll also have that clear author optimized bio and a link there to go to your website or go to your Amazon page, for example. Now, I do want to reassure you that even if you don't have a thousand followers, oftentimes people will go find the book themselves. So I've done some testing on this myself, and whenever I have a video do particularly well, I've noted the sales that I've made compared to the link visits that I had to my website. And the number of sales through Amazon far outweighed the people coming to my website. So that just shows me that people are taking the liberty of going onto Amazon or their favorite retailer and searching for your book versus always going through that link in your bio. So don't worry too much if you don't have that link in your bio yet. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is the fundamentals of a good TikTok video, which can also be applied to short form videos on other platforms as well. So this covers reels and shorts too. The most important thing that you want to have in your TikTok video is your hook. And there are a few different types of hooks that we can have in a TikTok video. What I mean by a hook is kind of, if we're thinking in writer terms, like a headline or a title, something that really hooks your audience's attention in that very first second so that they continue watching your content. So it can be a few different types of hooks. A common one is the text hook which just means that there is text over your video that speaks directly to your audience and tells them what this video might be about. This is the one that I probably use the most often. I speak directly to my audience and say something like, if you are going through anxiety or 
if this video found you, it's because blah, blah, blah. So I really am speaking directly to my audience and that works really well for the mental health posts that I do, but you'll have to find and tweak and experiment with what works best for you and your genre and your audience. The other type of hook is the music hook or the voiceover hook, and that is using sound to get your audience to stay and watch. So music could be a trending sound that's funny or catchy or a popular song that people recognize and want to listen to, and maybe that fits really well with your genre, with your video, and people stop and watch. You can also use a voiceover hook where you are speaking in the video and that causes people to stop and watch. And of course, there's also your visuals. Your visuals should be attention grabbing and engaging and exciting so that people stop and watch your video because of what they're seeing on the screen. For the basics, your video is going to be filmed vertically like I showed you before. The numbers 16 colon 9 is just the aspect ratio that you can set your phone to to record in the right size. Most phones default to this whenever you go to record a video on your phone, but just in case that's the right size, it will take up your full screen from top to bottom. A lot of times on phones, the back camera is going to be better quality than the selfie camera, which is the inside camera of your phone. But if you are recording yourself, it makes sense to record using the selfie camera because you can see yourself best. So don't worry about doing anything fancy. You don't need to have fancy lighting or tripods or anything like that. A lot of the times I either just hold my phone for my videos or I set it up with something behind it. I've used books, stacks of books behind my phone to hold it up. I've used a candle. There's lots of different things that you can use to get your phone to stay up. Um, but of course you could always buy a little tripod off of Amazon if you do want that extra equipment. Natural lighting is going to be best from your window or an overhead light in your room, adding an extra lamp. As long as it's not too harsh and drowning you out or drowning out whatever you're filming, you should be good to go. You can always supplement with an extra ring light if you would like. And then we have the actual editing of your video. So again, you do not need any fancy equipment or editing tools to edit. In fact, Instagram and TikTok both provide a great editing platform for your videos. You can make cuts, you can add sounds and do some basic editing within those apps. So some tips for you again on making your TikToks and Instagram videos engaging is to watch your hooks. So of course we need to have that hook in the very beginning that captures attention. And then throughout the video, we also want to be mindful of any dead spaces where we aren't talking or it's silent, or maybe we're stumbling over our words and just cut those out. So you can film just one clip and then go into TikTok and make cuts and take anything out that isn't entirely necessary for the story you're trying to tell in that video. And that will really help keep the video moving along, keep it a bit faster paced and keep the energy up so that people continue to pay attention and don't scroll away from your video. You can add text in TikTok, you can add music in TikTok, so that way right away from the beginning of the video, they are seeing exactly what this video is going to be about and are encouraged to stay and watch the rest. And you can also clip multiple videos and photos together, both within TikTok and within Instagram, so you really don't need any outside editing tools unless you would like to, of course. Now, one of the number one things that I get asked about is hashtags because they really can stump us and make us spend hours doing research on hashtags. But there's a couple of things that I want to share with you about hashtags. I mentioned a metrical study earlier in this presentation, and they recently found that hashtags have very, very little to do with the success of a video. Hashtags are there to categorize your video, help the algorithm know who to show your content to, but they're not something that you should be spending hours agonizing over. What you want to do is really just get into the mind of your reader and think about what they would be searching to find a book in your genre. So if a romance reader comes to TikTok or comes to Instagram looking for new books to read, it's very unlikely they're just going to be searching for generic hashtags like author, writer, romance, because a lot of people are going to be using those hashtags already and it's going to be very oversaturated. Instead, you want to think specifically. They might be looking for best romance books or new romance books, romance books of 2023, things like that to help them find new and relevant content. 
So be specific in your hashtag choices. Avoid those general tags like hashtag writer, hashtag author, where a lot of times it's other writers and other authors searching things like that and not necessarily a reader looking for a new book to read. So as you spend time on hashtags, keep in mind that being specific is going to be better than very generic hashtags. I do recommend anywhere from three to 10 on TikTok and three to five specific hashtags on Instagram. That is a direct recommendation from Instagram as well. Now getting into analytics, watch time is going to be one of your most important analytics to watch out for on TikTok. So what you want to do is go into your settings and make sure your analytics are turned on. And then after a couple days of posting a video, you can actually go directly into the analytics of that specific video and look at your watch time. I like to look at the average watch time compared to the average length of the video itself, as well as the percentage of people that watched the full video from beginning to end. If you can get people to stay and watch the full video, it's very likely that TikTok is going to show your video to more people, which leads to more views, more eyes on your book and more sales. You can also see how many followers you're getting from each post and pay attention to the videos that are converting to more followers so you can recreate that content again and again. A general rule of thumb is that if a video has under 20% of people watching the full video, we didn't quite grasp them. The video might be a little bit long and we want to keep people's attention a little bit more. So focus on ways that you can keep it exciting and engaging and over 30% is going to be great, even higher than that. And you are doing amazing. So keep it up. One of my favorite things about short form video is that you can really repeat what works again and again. Once you find some solid hooks that work for you and keep people's attention, you'll be able to repeat and repurpose content to not only other platforms, but to TikTok as well. So I'll repeat similar hooks. I'll film some similar style videos and repeat those to see results again and again. So it definitely takes some experimentation in the beginning, but once you've nailed down what works, remember that you can reuse and repost that content. So let's talk about some popular book talk video styles. The first one is going to be page flips and spine flips. These are when you basically flip through the book or show the spine of the book and reveal with text over top of your video, your hook. So you're going to share what's inside the book, give people some suspense, some cliffhangers, maybe a quote from the book. And this will be over around seven to 10 seconds. So not a very long video, but a great way to capture people's attention. Another video style you can try is an aesthetic video that has stock imagery and videos within it. So you could do like a slideshow of different stock images that you feel represent your book really well. And then you'll still want to add text over top with a hook. Some popular ones are things like, what do you read a book that has this, 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 or do you like books that have this, this, this? So you can kind of get your audience engaged with asking a question and then list out different tropes or themes or lessons found within your book. If you like to get on camera, you don't have to, but if you like to or want to, telling a story is a great way to build that rapport with your audience. This can be really great for nonfiction authors or any author who wants to kind of educate their audience and teach something. Educational videos do really well on TikTok. The next one is just having a block of text over a still or simple video. Similar to the page flips, you'll kind of be in the background. Maybe you're writing on the couch or reading in your bed or at your desk. Maybe you're filming your bookshelf and it doesn't have to be book related. It can be related to the themes in your book as well. Um, but then you're going to lay text over top and the types of text that do really well for this are often inspirational type text or something kind of controversial or really interesting that you can relate back to your book. That seven to 10 second style where people have to stop and read what, you're, what you wrote on the screen gets them to watch the video longer, which boosts your watch time and gets people engaged with the post. So that's a really great way to just do simple videos that don't take a lot of time and experiment with your different hooks. Another feature that TikTok added this year is carousels. So you can now add photos, add your text, add your music, and post it as photos that people can swipe through and engage with. This is a style I have been loving and seeing a lot of success with, as have other authors. If you're not super keen on videos, definitely give the carousel feature a try. All you do is select a few different photos from your gallery, 
hit upload. Make sure that it is set to the photo style. That way your photos will be swipeable and you'll want to make sure that you add a text hook still to your picture so that people stop and look through them all. The next thing I want to talk about is working with book talkers because it's a great way to build community and work with other people who have an audience and readers in your genre. This isn't something you have to do. I personally just rely on making my own videos, but I have sent out my book to some other TikTok accounts who post about similar things as me. So it can be a great way to expand your audience and have other people posting about your book for you. So the first thing that you want to do is search for your genre on TikTok and look at popular videos in your genre. You might find some people that are commonly talking about your genre, posting reviews or roundups of the books in your genre as well. And those might be good people to connect with. I would start by following them and engaging with their content, really enjoying their content for a while before asking anything of them. Sometimes if they have a big enough audience, they might already have guidelines on their website about if they accept review copies, if they accept free copies. Some book talkers with large accounts might actually charge you to post about them. So it's up to you to kind of weigh the pros and cons of that. Look at your budget, see if it would be a good fit and if it would be worth it to work with them. So now that you have content that will help you attract readers, let's talk about how to actually find readers on your own too and manually look for people who might be a good fit for your book. So the first thing you can do is try searching for your genre on social media. Whenever you do that, you'll probably find some posts about other books in your genre, maybe some popular books, maybe other authors talking about their own books, and likely some readers reviewing the books, talking about them, and interacting about these books that they love in the genre. So what you can do from there is engage with these posts. You're not going to be promoting yourself on these posts. This is just to get your name out there and interact in the community. So spend some time liking the posts, commenting on them from a genuine place. If you, you know, like the book, you can comment and share that you also enjoyed the book, share your favorite part about the book. And this is just going to get your name out there and show the algorithms the type of content that you enjoy so that you'll see more of it too. And that'll really help you when it comes to research and learning what works really well on these platforms, seeing what readers are talking about with the books that they love. And that can all impact the types of content that you're putting out there as well. So it's really beneficial, not only getting your name out there, but also helping you determine what content to share too. So you can not only search for your genre, you can search for the name of a comparable book and just look through the posts, interact with people. If you find an account that you enjoy that posts about books often, you can also follow them and interact with them on a regular basis. Now, some of the things that I really like to do that I feel are underutilized tools in this area that can really save you time with finding readers to interact with is to save posts that you enjoy. You can do this on both TikTok and Instagram. And that will give you a folder of people to come back to on a regular basis to interact with. So saving posts, you can turn on post notifications for accounts that you want to continue engaging with. So whenever they post something new, you'll be notified to your phone and can hop on and interact with their new post. Another feature that Instagram has is tagged posts. So authors like yourself can be tagged in posts from readers about a book that they're reading and enjoying. So you can go to a comparable author, maybe an author who's doing really well in your genre and look at who is tagging them in posts about their book and find readers that way as well. And again, this is just a tool for finding people who are talking about your genre and enjoying your genre. It is not a space where you're going to go and promote yourself on their page. You're going to leave that for your own personal page, have people come to you about the content that you're putting out there but this is a great way to just get involved in the reader community and find new readers who could potentially be readers for your book and they could potentially see your page and want to follow you back and learn more about your books over time as well. For the last 10 minutes or so of this presentation, I'm going to be live in the chat actually answering your questions. I'm gonna go through a couple quick frequently asked questions that I get first, but please go ahead and put your questions in the chat and I will be in there answering them for you live too. So the first one is how often do I have to post on these platforms? And the answer really varies based on your time, your bandwidth, and your goals. So my general strategy is at least three times per week. 
is what I recommend starting out with on TikTok and Instagram. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you TikTok, you have to post three times, five times a day. And I don't recommend that. I've always done daily for myself and you will see faster growth if you are posting more often, good quality, highly engaging content, not just posting anything, but daily can be really beneficial, especially in the beginning, whenever you're first starting out and growth tends to be a little bit slower. So posting more frequently will help you grow. But at the minimum, I would recommend around three times per week if you're able to do that and not taking huge long breaks in between, especially in the beginning, whenever you're first starting. The next question that I get asked often is how long should I try before I see results? And I want you to know that social media is a long-term strategy. Yes, you can go viral and see sales within a few days. I've had people who their first video went viral and they saw results, but that's not common and it's not necessarily going to happen for you. But I want you to know that the long-term results that social media and an author presence can have are really worth it, but it does take time. So for me, I saw a noticeable increase in sales a few months into TikTok. With Instagram, it took me a little bit longer. I didn't know exactly what I was doing. It took me some time to find my stride and find what works. And so this will vary for you as well and how much time you're able to put into it, but you can absolutely start seeing results within a few months if you are engaging with others and posting content a few times a week, really focusing on that reader mindset and sharing valuable content as well. And then another question that I get asked often is people have personal pages and they're not sure if they need to have a separate author page, if they can keep it private. And so I definitely recommend that you do have a separate author page. It should be author branded as you, it shows your commitment to your work and your books, and it's a separate separate place where you can talk about books and writing and your journey with the things that you write and a public page is going to get more engagement and more results. It's going to be very, very hard for readers to find you if your account is on private. So I do definitely recommend that it is a public page for both TikTok and Instagram. So I am going to be in the chat answering questions for the last 10 minutes or so of this presentation. I want to thank you so much for listening to my presentation as part of the AuthorTube Writing Conference. Thank you again for having me for this live chat. So go ahead and pop your questions in the chat. I also have some AuthorTube Writing Conference resources linked for you in the description of the video, as well as some personal resources linked for you as well, including the Book Talk Blueprint, which is a step-by-step -step guide to selling books on TikTok that more than 1,700 authors have have used to get started on TikTok. So I'll link that for you as well in the description. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.